Welcome back. The case of Ted Bundy is so famous everyone knows about it by now. But what we haven't done yet is considered this case from the point of an imaginary lawyer. So today I'll be sharing the details of my client and what I suggest should happen to him. Well, first of all, Mr. Ted Bundy had a very strange past. He was raised by his grandparents, who at the time made it seem they were his real parents, while his actual mother was said to be his older sister. Yes, already strange as fuck if you ask me, but apparently this was due to some stigma, him being born out of wedlock and the people were afraid of being judged. The good old fear of worrying about what other people think and all that other jazz. Interestingly enough, I think it was Mr. Bundy himself that eventually pointed out he doesn't care about what other people think of him. He had no remorse for his crimes because he could care less. Perhaps in a way you learned at least something useful. The art of not giving a fuck. Though it's clear he took it to the extreme in a direction that ultimately became his own downfall along with the unfortunate demise of dozens upon dozens of other women. His victim count was confirmed to be around 30, but theories exist that he might have killed way more people than that. He would always travel all across America picking random victims, though for the most part they did seem to be women, and particularly women with a certain look. Perhaps the victims reminded him of his ex-girlfriend. And what about her? Well, the story goes that he used to date a particular woman, but their relationship ended up falling apart because it was pretty much a failure in his life, lacking ambition. The breakup drove him to better himself and pursue his study in psychology. If the story ended there without the murder, I guess people would admire that. Everybody loves the story of someone picking themselves up after heartbreaking events in their lives. But oh no, Mr. Bundy has something else in his closet, quite literally the skeletons from his victims. What ended up happening was that he re-established contact with his ex-girlfriend, trying to pose as the newly transformed guy pursuing a great career, and his ex took the bait. She was amazed by his transformation and he kept dating her for a little bit, which ultimately led them to discussing marriage. It was at this point his true intents became clear. He wasn't dating her out of love, but out of a desire for revenge. He simply dumped her from his life and her phone calls went unreturned from that moment on. However, at one point she was able to talk to him about it and he simply claimed he had no recollection of ever deciding to marry her or of dumping her and he hung up never to talk to her again. Later he did admit that he simply did this to prove to himself that he would have been able to marry her had he wanted to, but he simply didn't give a flying fuck about her. Don't most of us have the same feeling concerning our ex-partners? I sure do. The modus operandi of Mr. Bundy would be to drive around the United States finding women at random and pretending he would have an injury of some kind. Because of this he needed some help. Let's say carrying something to his car. He would have one arm in a sling making it seem as if it was broken and then had the victim walk with him to his car only for him to then pull out a hammer and smash them on the head and throwing them into his car. Based on this he was a calculated killer. Not like some where they act in a state of pure madness and don't think carefully over their actions. He sure knew what he was doing and he got away with it for quite some time, but thankfully not forever or else more victims would have certainly be added to his list of brutal murders. At one point when he was arrested he was even able to escape his own imprisonment. No joke. He was allowed into a library to read some books, but instead of reading and becoming even smarter than he already was, he decided to cut his study short and jump out of the window breaking his legs, back and neck. Wait, what? No, he didn't break anything, that would have simply been the ideal outcome. But he managed to escape the cops, however. It didn't thankfully take them very long for them to find him, since being out in the cold mountain air isn't that easy after all. Long story short, during his trial what ultimately got him convicted without a shadow of a doubt was a bite mark he left on one of his victims. That is just one of the gruesome things he was into. He also had sex with their corpse. Sometimes he would even have sex with just their skull alone. Yes, it would literally be detached from the body, just to give you some more visual ideas about it. Now regardless of those activities, it was the bite mark that they could tie to his own teeth after examination and it finally gave them clear evidence that he was responsible for these gruesome murders. While he was incarcerated and on death row, he finally confessed to dozens upon dozens of murders since there was no longer any way for him to escape justice at this point. By his own account, 
His porn addiction was one of the reasons for him raping and brutally murdering women, but he has done a lot of unspeakable acts of madness, that's his clear. Which I won't go into for this video though, but I will consider this case from the point of view of me being his lawyer. Let's pretend we are sitting in court even though he didn't really want a lawyer. He wanted to be his own lawyer, the cocky bastard that he was. I will force myself upon him even though he has long gone slipped into the afterlife himself. Here's my letter for my client. I want you to know I wrote it with as much passion as I could muster. <clears throat> Your Honor, what imbecile can't fathom that this man has been born broken and deranged? The calculated moves of his actions speak volumes of the insanity behind his eyes. Every time I have to sit next to this guy I feel like I'm about to pee myself. There's something wrong with his soul. It emanates from his orifices and I cannot quite pinpoint what it is. My greatest wish for my client, and I say this with his well-being in mind, is to execute him as fast as possible. If it was not for his true psycho soul, I would have suggested feeding him to the lions, but the risk is that they will inherit his traits and develop human consciousness by consuming his meat, putting all of the African continent at risk of being eaten alive. I am so deeply happy you decided to end this man's life and it can't happen soon enough. I only ask of you, I can be there to witness the execution and you allow me to bring my own popcorn because it sure is gonna be a wonderful show. Perhaps if you can be so kind since he will be electrocuted, can I hook up my microwave to the same power socket and prepare prepare my popcorn at the same time. That is all. You're on. Mr. Bundy sure was one of those next level serial killing monsters that roamed planet Earth. We always hope the victims are resting in peace. And finally, the demonic spiders of hell have something to celebrate. They get to weave a web of hellfire around his soul, never for him to return ever again.